Welcome to this panel, which is uh, Southeast Asia Financing Panel. And uh, I'm, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kenneth Tan from the MDA. Uh, I'm going to do a few things. One, uh, I'll give you a very quick introduction to our speakers. And two, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit also about the interactive mechanism called pigeonhole that will be used uh, as one of the ways that you can ask questions of our panel afterwards. Uh, that's interactive and anonymous, and you just use um, SMS or your, your tablet. But uh, if you want to do it the way a lot of us have been asking questions for years at these events, you can, of course, also use the microphone and just, and just tell us. So uh, first of all, a little bit about our speakers. Uh, you'll have write-ups in, uh, in the event material, so I don't, don't propose to read them out. But maybe just to set the context for the discussion we are having and therefore uh, why it is of uh, significance to us to have the people that we have. Uh, on your extreme right, on stage right, is Ng Se Yong uh, of MM2 Entertainment. And uh, MM2 Entertainment is one of our most active and successful local independent production companies. Uh, but a lot of people know Se Yong also for the long and illustrious career that he had at Mediacorp. Uh, before coming out as a co-entrepreneur and, uh, and doing a lot of things, as we say in the, uh, in the football domain, kicking a lot of goals now. Um, well, between Seyong and myself is Lee Su Hui from Starhub Singapore. Um, many of you may know uh, Starhub as our, um, not just cable TV, pay TV operator, but also, in fact, it's an integrated media company with uh, internet, telephony, mobile telephony, um, everything. And uh, Starhub has uh, been doing a lot and is planning to do a lot uh, by way of content, uh, local content that appeals, of course, aggregated content from some of the names that are from different parts of the world that many consumers are familiar with. Uh, it is very important that we have both uh, content creators as well as the content carriers and everybody in between, so we're very glad to have them. Uh, then respectively from Korea and Japan on, uh, on your left of the stage, uh, immediately next to me is uh, Yonu Choi, who is with CJ e &M Pictures. Uh, CJ, of course, is uh, the Korean conglomerate, and she is Korean, but uh, she is a licensed US attorney and uh, is responsible for, uh, among other things, the, the co-production activities that uh, CJ does with the rest of the world. Uh, she and CJ have had um, some experience uh, with, with Singapore companies, with our part of the world, and she and CJ share, I think, Singapore's um, ambition and goal to be able to really bridge what we are doing in our film projects, in our, uh, in our films, uh, into the rest of the world, to international space. So that's your new. And uh, on your extreme left, uh, from Japan, we have Mr. Shinjiro Nishimura from Nikatsu. Uh, well, one uh, for those of you who are Japanese film buffs, uh, you might already know that he served as AD to Takashi Miike, uh, prolific filmmaker for, for 10 years. You know, um, somebody said to me a few weeks ago that uh, in some parts of the world, including in Japan, uh, that is the length of time that you serve as an assistant director or uh, assistant director of um, photography and similar things. In some other parts of the world, you have to kind of fast forward it, but it means the amount of experience and expertise that is gained is, is quite remarkable. Um, Nishimura-san, or Shinjiro as we call him, is currently with Nikatsu. Uh, producer and now producing a first ever Japan Indonesia co production. We will be talking uh, on this panel about financing and what's happening in the region and opportunities and challenges of working together. Um, okay, so that's about our speakers. Now, about the, uh, the pigeonhole platform, uh, I think, yes, it's up there. So, afterwards, when we take questions and answers, please go to that URL and do that with the ID and password, and you will be able to type in your questions. Uh, if you want to identify yourself, of course, you're most welcome to do so, but if you don't, uh, the questions will be anonymous. 
And uh, what will happen is uh, I, at least on the iPad up here, will be able to see the questions and I think they'll be flashed on the projection screen as well. And you'll be able to see the popularity. So people will, will indicate, uh, if a lot of people want a particular question answered, we'll, we'll sort it first. Let's see how we go in terms of time, because I do want to make sure that we give our panelists uh, enough time to, to share as well. And we'll, I'll, I'll ask them some questions. So we'll, we'll just do it. We'll, we'll um, improvise and we'll be spontaneous. But what I hope we can do by the time we adjourn from here is to have um, sort of a, a fuller mental landscape of what's happening in, in film financing and, and film projects uh, in this part of the world and how some of the challenges and some of the opportunities are being addressed. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what we'll do. Uh, maybe I'll just start off by asking each of my uh, panelists to uh, share something, uh, introducing themselves or introducing their thoughts on this, this overall topic that we, we, we have today. Um, Anyone would like to go first? See you? Yeah. Okay, I'll go first since we're the smallest company. Uh, MM2 is, uh, is a uh, local uh, Singapore based uh, film uh, financing, production, as well as distribution company. In the past uh, two years or so, we have been involved with probably a large, um, we've been involved with a large proportion of local, as in Singapore movies made uh, in, uh, in Singapore. We typically, our movies are distributed or shown theatrically in Singapore, Malaysia, uh, with extensions to Taiwan, Hong Kong, and uh, we are making some inroads into China. Um, probably unlike some of the other panelists here, because we are a small, small independent production distribution financing company. We don't, uh, we don't come up with, we don't have money inside, we don't have a, like, a, like granddaddies, you know, upstairs who can finance us. We, we have to look independently for finance ourselves. Typically, we partner people, people will come to us or we will uh, generate our own production in-house. Or very often, there are people who come to us either with a project or sometimes, very often, they have part of the funding in place, say a government funding, and they are looking at gap financing, and we would then help them to, to put the whole, the, 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 the other parts of the financing in place. For us, the key sources of financing would be one, uh, strategic partners. Strategic partners would include uh, platform media owners, for example, Sahab. Sahab is one of our regular partners, you know, and um, cinema operators, uh, say GV, Shaw, Cathay, film distributors, uh, DVD distributors, and uh, cable distributors. And now, of course, there are some online platforms that we also look for financing. Second source of finance would be uh, financial partners. Financial partners, they're quite, it's, quite, um, it's quite direct. It's like people who want to make money for making movies. That is a whole gamut of them, including uh, 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 banks or uh, personal uh, financial bodies, right? All these people who just invest a certain amount and they are looking at a return from, from the movies. Third would be sponsorship. Sponsorship, again, it, uh, it includes, I mean, anyone out there, any private entity or typically uh, smaller companies or maybe bigger companies, they want. And these are not necessarily, strictly speaking, they're not just looking at making money from the movie. Sometimes they're looking at putting, uh, planting messages in the movies, right? Having uh, other strategic interests in the movies. Very importantly, another source is, of course, government funding. Uh, thanks to MDA, they are, you know, they have pro they've been providing over the last two years pretty attractive schemes. But don't forget, government will only fund up to a certain percentage. Kenneth well knows a certain percentage of a movie. So we still have to look for the, for, the other sort, for the other parts of the funding. And finally, personal aspirations. Personal aspirations are like, you know, some people just like to be in the movie business. They think it's very glamorous and they have money, they put in some money. Uh, some people may have uh, a girlfriend who want to be in the movies, you know. Not for us, lah, huh? I mean, I'm saying 
Sometimes it happens in, in, other, in, 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 in other places, but uh, all kinds you know, of personal aspirations. Different people want to make a movie for their own reasons. So these are our main five sources of, uh, of finance. I think if you want to know more details, we can follow up with other questions. I'll let the other panelists uh, uh, introduce themselves. First. Great, thank you, Seyong. Suhi, perhaps you can tell us a bit about Starhub's perspective or your perspective. Startup, basically, um, you know, like what Kenneth mentioned just now, we are in the pay TV business, we also have telecommunication, we have broadband, and I think um, where actually Startup entered into film uh, making is uh, actually in, in, in investing, actually we are more really playing the role of an investor, because we believe in the partnership, um, and we also believe in developing the local media industry. So I think when we started two years ago um, in investing in, in films, the, the idea is really to create certain local presence uh, as we're at the initial stage of uh, producing our own programs. We wanted to not just be an official TV, um, you know, uh, publicity, uh, giving publicity to the movies, but we also want to actually see how we can actually help to promote the local film industry. So that's how we started. And I think uh, I think this year with Our Boys to Men 1 and 2, I think we're very delighted that it is the highest uh, gross box office to date. Uh, in the Singapore box office. And I think going ahead, I think StarHub will want to continue to uh, invest and grow and develop the local talent and the local film industry. And I think similarly, I think this year uh, with uh, Ilo Ilo, uh, we are the, also the official TV uh, uh, for Ilo Ilo. And I think we want to play our part to promote uh, the local film uh, and you know, not just in Singapore, but also to the rest of the world. Uh, Shinjiro, in, in Japan and your experience as, as a producer and co-productions, what's your perspective on all this? Uh, actually, you know, the like, uh, Japanese market is very different from the like, other market because, you know, people tend to see the like, domestic films. Uh, like 60% uh, of the domestic, you know, the box office is from the bo uh, domestic films. But Still, you know, the population of the people is getting like uh, down now. Still, even though you know there are like uh, 150, like 150 million people living in Japan, so still the market is very big. But still, you know, the we have like real room to expand our, you know, the opportunity to uh, expand our business. So that's why Nikatsu is really eager to start up the co-production to get into the new market. And, you know, I have experience, now I'm producing the film with the Indonesian producers and Indonesian directors, with the Indonesian actors, and we have like a strong partner in the United States to sell, to do the, you know, to sell the film as an international sales agency. So it's very really hard to just for Japanese producer to get into the new market. Of course, you know, once you know when we get into the new market, of course we need the partners. That's why I'm here to meet producers and the investors and fund and of course, you know, directors too. So usually, you know, in Japan, like uh, we, our investment like uh, standard is if you invest the money to the film, you get some rights for the like a theatrical release or DVD or TV sales, internet sales. And once you know invest, you invest the money to the film, you uh, you know that company uh, make the profit from their own right. So after you know uh, the company just, you know, uh, get back the profit to the part of the film. Uh, it takes so long to recoup the budget, or it never happened to get the profit. So it's really hard to just invest the money just without any right. But, you know, now what we are doing is that, you know, we of course, you know, as a producer, we would like to more profit after the recoupment. So we are going to have a partnership with the production, uh, you know, 
outside of Japan. And also we are going to have a, like a partnership to, uh, for the US like a sales agency. Because you know, usually you know, the sales agency, you know, if we have a partnership with a sales agency, uh, they're really you know, working hard to do the, like a pre-sales. And once you know, the sales agency get the pre-sales, uh, we are going to get the money from the bank. I, that is not equity. So once you know we return the money to back to the bank, uh, we don't have to, you know, return the like uh, another profit. But if you you know make the film with the equity money, uh, we have to return the profit even after the recoupment to the you know the investors. So that what. Nikatsu is doing now for the co-production, but you know the main our uh, our main goal is to get the more profit from the international market. That what Nikatsu is doing now. Okay, I'm already starting to form some questions in my mind. But first, maybe uh, we hear from you now. Now, CJ, um, CJ does production. CJ does distribution. CJ does exhibition, uh, music. You know, Mama, the Mnet Music Awards, among other things. What is your perspective of, of all this? Uh, yeah, what we do, well, we started as a sugar company, so it's not only the entertainment media business that we focus on, we also base our income on food as well. Um, it's, I mean, nowadays it seems like you can never define a one single market, and therefore you need to really integrate all the markets together, which is a really hard job for us. And I think for CJ, it's because we have the experience, we have the, I guess, the, um, the personnel to execute those kind of plans. We're trying to um, constantly expand our market with our contents, which might be, it could come from music like K-pop, it could come from Korean drama that we produce, it could come from um, some kind of original games that we, we make, or, um, like original screenplays that we developed together. So it's, it, we're trying to commingle everything into a one format and maybe as a one content but a multi-platform use. So I mean, it could not only be limited to a film, but it could also go out to internet, uh, VOD or drama or any type of platform. And I think we're trying to experiment every single way to make it easier for us to figure out what's the global content that might please everyone in the world which is not easy, but we're trying. How important, th this is for any, any of the panelists, how important is it? Because we've been he hearing in the last few minutes, uh, okay, if you get a, a broadcaster, for example, on board, if you get a sales agent on board, uh, how important is that in your view or in your experience to the whole process of putting the financing and the project together. I'm asking because um, it doesn't always happen that way in our part of the world. And what, what are your views? How, how crucial is that? Maybe either Seyong or, or Shinjuro or both of you. For us, uh, having a broadcaster on board is, is very important for both financial and strategic reasons. First of all, I mean, Broadcasters, being a big company, they are good paymasters, right? They, they will pay on time. And normally, when the production needs to start, okay, you need to have the cash to roll. So we are, we are assured that when they say they sign and they say we're going to pay, they will pay and they'll pay on time. So that helps a lot. Secondly, for strategic reasons, a broadcaster has a platform later on to help us market and promote the movie. And that would, in turn, help in the uh, final box office uh, numbers. So definitely, uh, you know, we, we, that's why the first people we go to will be you know, our, our, the, 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 the media owner's broadcaster. Uh, yes. Would, would, you, or would you recommend to people that they would proceed with a project even if they don't yet have a broadcaster or a sales agent on board? Of course. I mean, at the end of the day, you proceed with a project when you have confidence in the financial... Uh, so-called package of your project. As in, if you feel, I mean, my, I, I, I believe it's better that you have 100% of the money on the table, of your production budget on the table before you proceed. But it, it depends, it differs, it depends from, on, the, on the filmmaker. 
If let's say you have a lot of confidence at 50% on a, on a table and you feel that you can secure a, based, on, based on the viability of your own project, you feel that you can secure the next 50% with or without the broadcaster, you know, you can, don't forget, the broadcaster is not just the, I mean, at the end of the day, you still got to think about the distribution of your movie, right? Because if you are going to have all the money on the table, depending on how you get the money, and whether this money you need to return, uh, so-called, on the investment, and you cannot find a distribution channel, and that's, that's what we encounter. A lot of, especially independent filmmakers, come to us, they have a project, they don't know whether this, this, this movie can be distributed later on, how are they going to make back their money? The broadcaster is not going to broadcast for them. They can promote and all that. But without a distribution outlet, I would say the distribution outlet would be even more critical than having a broadcaster on board at the start. The sales agent, Shinjiro, how, how critical? Uh, of course, you know, they, you know the, it's, there's no like a, the most important thing to make a film. But as a producer, the most you know, important thing to how you know we make the good package with the director and actors. So once we you know attach the director and actors, it's very easy for the sales agency sales agency to recognize how the film will be. So you know as a producer, it's very important to look for the new director and also actors. So, but that depends on budget. So if we need to raise like a 40 million, 50 million US dollars, in that case, of course, we need a like a famous director, which is like a make a hard type of film and the actors should be, you know, popular in like an international market. So in that case, the, that is a story to make a, like a package with the director and actors to raise that kind of money. But at the same time, if we do the uh, like a one million, two million budget type of film, of course we, it's you know we can get more like a freedom to think about the project. So in that case, we can focus on the new director which is like a Kiraos, which is the co-production between Japan and Indonesia I'm producing. And, you know, of course, Nikatsu is also investing the money to the film. So I just talked to the company, you know, because there is a very good director in Indonesia, and Nikatsu is now, you know, focusing on the production with the foreign talent. It's also the very important, like, a part to, you know, let company think about the investment because of the, you know, the budget. So we have like a two stories to think about the co-production for the international market. You mentioned earlier on uh, when you get part of the financing, for example, from banks, from a bank, and that's not equity. So once uh, that financing, say debt financing has been repaid, uh, you do not need to pay anything else, share of revenue, share of things like that. So just, just park that point for now, the, the type of financing, eh? non-equity and equity. And you, know, you mentioned, um, you didn't actually use the word that some people use that transmedia, but multi-platform uh, concepts that are good, not just for, for one platform for many. I want to toss these two things around a little bit. Eh? Uh, first, about the type of financing, uh, non-equity versus equity. And Seong, you mentioned earlier that using your company as an example, you don't really have internal sources of, of funding. Like you tend to go outside. I guess this would be very common for a lot of production companies. What are your thoughts, anybody on the panel, about, about this area? Uh, I hear now, or I've been hearing recently, that people want to come up with concepts that from inception are meant to be multi-platform, right? It's not something that starts as a TV series and then you make a film or the other way around, but something which from the start 
it can be a feature film, and then there's also a game and an app and, and so forth. Um, so your perspective on that. And secondly, how much easier or less easy or more difficult it is then to go out and start the conversations about financing when the project is like that? Or does it tend to be more, no, no, I'm, I'm the type of company, I'm the type of uh, investor that knows this kind of medium the best, and therefore give me the name of the director, give me the name of the lead cast and we'll just go. So let's have a bit of a conversation around that. The type of financing and the type of property Anybody, any, any one of the panelists? Um, I think because CJ is both producer and investor, so we do understand the both, we wear both hats, so we understand the producer side and the investor side as well. Um, from the producer point of view, it's much comfortable and much easier to make the film if they have the more pure equity, the more easier to go through because there are less strings attached to pure equity. Uh, from the financial point of view, more equity means more risk. So we try to mitigate our risk by lowering the amount of equity into it. So ideally, if you're talking about a traditional model, that for instance, if we say it's a $10 million budget film and it's indie finance, it's not a US studio film, so <clears throat> there are independent investors in it. Um, ideally, what, what we, we will kind of uh, perceive as an ideal scenario as a, a financier is probably get like almost 80% uh, of the, I, I would say the gross budget, buy soft money, uh, pre-sale loans, or see, that could be senior or mezzanine loans, uh, any kind of um, grants or rebates, um, loans based upon the pre-sale amount, and then whatever the remaining 20% will, will might be pure equity. That's kind of like the ideal traditional model to it. It's not easy to achieve, and then, and then we do get a lot of submission from independent productions as well, but you can never, they always say they have the best package, but if you have the best package at the same time, it's kind of like a chicken and egg situation. Then why aren't there any sales agent or um, local distributor attached to this project? So we do ask that question right away. So it's kind of like, there are, there's a missing element in there that doesn't really make that package the best ideal package of all, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're gonna discourage that project just because they don't have a local distributor or sage agent attached to the project. However, it is, it is, what I want to emphasize is that in order to mitigate the risk, we do really need to base on the international market and have all the pre-sales done before going into production ideally. Because it's really hard to sell it afterwards when you finish the production. And if you don't have a primary market to focus in it, then it's, it's not gonna be loved by the rest of the world. It's, it's like you can never be a friend of everyone unless you're a friend of a really, really, really best, unless you really have a best friend in it. So I think for co-productions, and especially for Southeast Asia, it's, it's our homework to figure out what's the primary um, market, or what's, what's the content of the primary market, meaning the language, which language is it gonna be made, is it gonna be Chinese, like Mandarin, or any other local languages in Southeast Asian countries, or is it gonna be English, then is English gonna work in Southeast Asian market, or is it, I don't know, like really. So I think for us, when we're thinking of co-productions, we really have to segment it into two parts. Is it gonna be a global project that's gonna target towards the all over the market in the world, which is very ideal, but very hard to achieve at the same time? Or is it gonna be a local project? So is it gonna be a Singaporean movie that Korea participates, CJ participate in it with the uh, Korean talents? Um, that's, that's the first that we try to figure out. And I just explained to you the traditional model of how we do the financing, ideally. Um, Multi-platform, it's a different thing. Um, I haven't really thought of any successful precedents that I could think of right now at this moment with the multi-platform kind of usage of the content. Uh, maybe some, some, some films that's based on uh, internet games, it's kind of example to it. Somehow they do kind of a multi-release on it. But I think there isn't a really fine line or straightforward answer to that. I don't know, I'm open to any other suggestions. Maybe, Suhi, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, you, you, uh, you, you are, you are multi-platform. Mm -hmm. yeah? what, what are your thoughts on this? I think definitely transmedia kind of content, multiple platforms from mobile phones to, to you know, broadband to pay TV to the, the movie screen. I think this is a whole string of integrated content that we are looking for. 
But I suppose here is, uh, is there a, a good idea that could be fully integrated and can be effective in all media? I suppose that's the challenge. But I think as we look at the consumer consumption, people are consuming content via multiple devices. So if we have a concept that could be applicable and tailor-made to the different devices, I think that would actually reinforce uh, the engagement level of the content. But I suppose, again, the challenge is um, how do we find something that could be effectively uh, you know, tailor-made for each platform and still um, you know, have the multiple touch point and really engage the viewer. You know, you mentioned uh, this distinction between you know something that is made primarily for the local, a local market, versus something that's meant to be to be global. And let's pick up on that uh, a little bit. Um, you know, particularly for a country like Singapore, and for producers, content creators from a country like Singapore, um, being international is very important and. Uh, one of the ways in which our people try to do that is to come up with concepts for films and, and other types of content uh, that can appeal locally. So that's the first, the first thing. Right? Uh, but then ideally also want that material to be able to travel. Um, what are the experiences on the pet that the panel members have with this regard? Is it, is it possible or would it be uh, more practical when at the outset a project is being considered to decide at that point whether primarily uh, I don't think anyone would, would refuse the opportunity to go as wide as possible but I think you meant the primary focus yeah? uh, what, what, are, what are some thoughts uh, any of you would have um, for the recent CJ titles that we just did of co-production is one of them is Snowpiercer with director Pong Judo it's a Korean director with um, a famous actor, Song Gang-ho cast it in it, but all, all the cast are very, um, I guess, worldwide Hollywood, which is kind of rare because it's, it's our first um, experiment and then luckily we succeeded in it. Um, and then luckily we also succeeded in the Korean box office as well. But we still need to evaluate what was the factor in it. Is it because it's a global content with the Korean talent involved or is it because of the power of director Bong Joon-ho, which he's really popular in Korea. So a lot of the audience are attracted to go to see his movies. Um, the other scenario that we did is a total localization of a movie called Wedding Invitation. It's a Chinese movie, but actually it's based on a Korean um, film, and it's a remake of a Korean film. And Korean director and Korean DOP participate in the film. But every, every other um, below-the-line crews and staffs and even the above-the-line cast were all, Kore all Chinese. And we only primarily focused that movie for Chinese market. We didn't really aim for the global market. I mean, global market, whatever sales or we do, it's a, it's a bonus and it's a plus. But, um, and hopefully our strategy kind of worked out well, so it did well in the Chinese market. So those kind of are two different uh, projects that we did and then we experienced through it. Um, next, moving on, we have another title, Final Recipe, which is an English language movie about an Asian family. That's kind of a hybrid in between, so we'll see how it goes with that. But I, I would kind of recommend that First, try to, try to find the primary market, and that primary market has to be, at least from that revenue, it should be able to cover the gross budget, ideally. Okay. Seong, um, MM2 had the project that was done between Singapore and Taiwan, uh, My Dog, Dodo, where in terms of casting, yeah, uh, there were actors who were chosen to, to appeal to both, the common language, languages or, or primary language between Taiwan and Singapore being Mandarin. And um, do you want to, that's just some examples here of different combinations. So I thought of, of that one. Do you want to talk a little bit about that experience? And, you know, when, when um, you and your team um, came up with that and started thinking about it and brought that project to fruition and to release, uh, was, it, was it the intention from the start? that actually the local market primarily would be Singapore and Taiwan? Uh, or was it thought of as a local film? Or was, in that case, the casting of uh, Wang Shixian, uh, Jason Wang, popular Taiwanese actor, uh, done with the, with the view that that would be one of the elements that would give that movie a, a leg up, just like you know, with, with Bong Joon-ho being known in, in Korea. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that or, or any other examples that you, you have? 
Uh, actually, that's not the only example. All our movies uh, have components of original appeal. That's always what we try to do. Uh, that's not the only one. I mean, in our other movies, Imperfect, uh, also has quite a large Taiwanese uh, component, as in the casting. And uh, most movies would have actors from Singapore, Malaysia, Taiwan, sometimes Hong Kong, always. But our experience that also is uh, the primary market is still the most important because your box office, the, large, the, the biggest numbers will come from the primary market. And for us, unfortunately, Singapore is, is small with a small population base. The, the good thing is that we have also redefined our primary market as Singapore and Malaysia as an extension because culturally we share a lot and we find that a lot of things that work in Singapore also work in Malaysia. And the casting of other talent from Taiwan and all that is to ensure that we also get a foothold into the other markets like Taiwan and sometimes Hong Kong. It's a very small start, but we believe it's a good beginning. Another model that we are trying, I think, is something we feel maybe would work more promising, is to adapt a story or a movie that is already in production for Singapore and Malaysia and do a similar project in, 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 in another in another territory. And this we're doing with a project we call ATM, which the conceptualization, the script, was, it's a Malay language movie, supposed to be for the Malaysian Singapore market, right? But we are also producing a Hong Kong version to be totally produced in Hong Kong for the Hong Kong uh, and, and, and China market. So we believe at least if it's, more, if it's, if it's done locally, we believe the market appeal is, 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 is a, 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 a better. But if we want to do, and we continue to do this, cast regional actors and all that to make the proposition more interesting. But if we want to capture the total, the problem if with co-production or with including all these regional elements, it could dilute the property. And then the, the, the worst thing is that if it, it, it doesn't appeal to anybody, Right? So we still have to focus. Like Jack Neal's movie, they are very focused on the Singapore market and they make money from that one. So we are looking for different, different ways of, of doing this. So circling back to financing, you know, in, in our part of the world, uh, what, are, what are some of the challenges uh, you can speak about and how to overcome them in the current environment? Any, anybody? challenges in getting the money to make your films, getting financing, and overcoming them? Uh, actually, that's a good question, because you know, that depends on what kind of film you know, we're going to produce and who is in, you know, going to be involved to the project. So I think that the, you know, uh, that's the, what kind of film is going to be like a hit in the market because producer has, you know, producer has to, uh, you know, think about what kind of like a trend, what kind of, you know, the concept is going to be new. Like, a, like, like 10 years ago, like a Asian action type, you know, action film is so, you know, uh, popular for the, at the international market because you know we don't have to take care of the language and we don't have to take care of the you know the culture just you know it's fine to show the you know the hard very strong type of action and still still it's very hard to sell that like a drama type of film to the international market in that case it's easy for the investors to you know understand you know to recognize that kind of film is not good at the market to get the profit. So now that, you know, I think that the, uh, the easiest way, I mean, to get the interest from the investors is to have like a famous actors with new directors who can make the film with a low budget but high quality. So that 
It's a very good question, though. But still, you know, the, there is like a fund and the financial the investors who is interested in the films. So the important thing is that how you know producer can get you know the attention for the investors from the package. And what types of investors do you target? Uh, actually, you know, uh, of course, you know, as a producer, like as you know, uh, she said, it's like uh, feel comfortable to have like equity money before the you know the production, but you know, uh, I hope you know uh, we are making a film with you know the like a uh, very in a very small group, so for example like. Uh, uh, the investors from uh, other countries, especially like uh, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, because you know they're growing up so fast, and their economy is going to be very you know big in the few years. So I hope you know the new investors from you know out you know from the outside of the film industry is going to uh, interested to, you know, investing the money. I'm not sure that, you know, the you know, appropriate, you know, answer, but it's still, that is a very difficult concern. Interestingly, when I was just listening to everybody, okay. uh, I think both you and you know did not, unless I missed it, did not really talk about government funding. At least we didn't explicitly mention it. Uh, Seong, Singapore, you did mention that, right? The government funding and uh, um, it, how how important or not important is funding from the government? Um, for case of Korea, we we have um, we have a funding government subsidized funding called Global Fund. Uh, it's actually run by a private company, but it's a government subsidized a government funding. But there are private investors invested into that fund as well. And that fund is targeted towards international co-production projects that involve Korean domestic um, companies to, I guess, enhance their ability to participate in global projects. So there are certain criteria that has to be met in order to be qualified to apply for the fund. But once that criteria is met, it's pretty, um, it's pretty same as pure equity as a private investor. And I think that's, that's one of the resources that um, international producers might want to consider produ uh, consider doing a co-production in Korea because it's it's almost like um, it's, I guess a little over a hundred million dollar fund yeah and then there's another second fund that's gonna be formed uh, form next year as well must the applicant uh, to be considered for funding from that fund must the applicant be a Korean company Yes, you need to work with a Korean company. It has to be either a Korean uh, production company or a Korean post-production company. And you need, um, there are certain like a point system where you qualify for soft money for other countries as well, the same in Korea too. So they actually do a point system where you evaluate how many Korean talents are involved or what um, Korean post-production, production, pre-production pre stages, various, and then if you qualify up to that point, then you get a qualification to apply for the fund. What has changed compared to maybe you know two years ago? Has it become easier, harder to get financing for uh, for for film projects? What has changed? Uh, you know, in like uh, like Nikatsu is also doing the like uh, domestic films. The budget of the each film is getting like uh, smaller than two years ago, but still, you know, they. For the international co-production, I think still, you know, we are getting a uh, better opportunity to have like a more financing from the, you know, the new investors. So I think, you know, the compared to the two years ago, like a, you know, like a domestic market in Japan is like a getting worse than before, but you know, like international wise, you know, we are going to have like more chance to expand, you know, to have like more like uh, chances to make like international co-production films. Okay. 
Uh, I thought when we started the session, I might have to do a mid-session reminder, but I don't need to. A lot of questions have come in. This might be a good time for me to start uh, including the audience questions. I am not sure if uh, the organizers are going to put this on the screen. Ah, yes. So, uh, wow. Okay, eight votes, eight votes. Question on the top left, maybe for Suhui, yeah? The question from this member of the audience is, does Starhub come in as equity investor or a TV channel pre-buying content? Um, primarily, it's actually equity investor. And where it's viable, we would also uh, have arrangement in terms of the content rights. But uh, really, at the end of the day, what makes more business sense from the perspective of the investor will be the driving factor. Okay. Uh, for Seyong, you also have eight votes. Huh? Thanks for explaining MM2's business model. We understand that MM2 has asked MDA grant awardees for up to 50% of their grants up front in return for MM2's collaboration. Kindly comment. I'm just reading the question verbatim. No, I don't think that is a correct interpretation. I think we work on different uh, models depending on the comfort level of our partners. So if uh, a partner is comfortable, because we feel that if it's, uh, let's say, somewhere 50%, we will ask, say, can we do this? But it's for the partner to decide whether we bring that kind of value to the table, right? Uh, it can be 40%, 30%, whatever, right? But we will propose a certain number, and the partner will come in and say, okay, this is comfortable for us because you bring this value, because after all, MDA funding will give us a certain percentage of my total budget, right? I still need this amount of money. And if MM2 provides a value in providing uh, whatever is left over, you know, it will be good to, uh, uh, that, that's the value we bring to the table, right? Uh, then okay. But it is always on, like, if you're not comfortable with whatever will be proposed, there's always a counter-proposal, and then some of them will reach a certain arrangement. Some of them will say, no, I'm not comfortable, you walk away from the table, and we are fine with it. So it's purely based on you know, a negotiation and agreement. Okay. This next question is not specifically directed at Shinjiro, but given what the question is, maybe you'd like to take it. When we talk about Southeast Asia, I don't think we can neglect Indonesia as a market. What do you think about the country's current situation and its future? Uh, uh, yes, actually, you know, uh, Indonesia is a very possible market because, you know, the numbers of the movie theaters is going to be like a two times of the, you know, the current number. So, yes, uh, I don't know, you know, the guy, you know, asking is, you know, he or she doesn't think, you know, we can, you know, uh, neglect Indonesia as a market. But I believe, you know, Indonesia is a very big market in the future. So the first co-production, you know, my first co-production is going to be very, you know, good opportunity to start up the business with the Indonesia. So, that depends on how you know the each producer think about the market, but still I think you know the Southeast Asia, of course Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, of course you know other countries is going to be a big market in the future. Okay, this one is also open ended. At which project stage should producers approach the financiers? Concept stage. Script development stage, packaging stage, anyone who wants to take that? Um, for us, it's really at any stage. The earlier, the better, because we could actually make it together to make it more marketable. Uh, because if you come at the very last stage where everything is almost fixed, then it's really hard to, I guess, uh, transi transition the project in order to be, uh, be make it sellable to the international market. So. I think concept stage-wise, we could develop the script together. If we have a script, we could polish the script together. If you don't have a package, you could try to package it with Asian talents that we have connection to or Hollywood um, talents that we have, because we, we have a branch office at the, at the US as well. So I think the earlier, the better is the honest answer for us. Thank you. 
Um, for Seyong, MM2 has a reputation of picking slapstick comedy and horror films to distribute. Does the company intend to broaden its catalogue for more cerebral subject matter or remain predictable? Uh, since when do we have that reputation? <laughs> okay, we've produced some comedy. I don't know whether you call it slapstick or not. Right? I don't know how you define it. We have done some horror movies. But if you look at our whole slate of movies over the past two years, in fact, we would have preferred if we had done more comedy and horror and made more money. But because we believe that you know, uh, to support also different types of filmmakers. You look at our past record, in fact, in fact my dog Toto is a drama, which actually didn't do that well in the box office. And Imperfect is a teenage drama, all right? Okay, we have two, three, five, nine, which is a horror slapstick. I don't know whether you categorize Jack Neal movies as slapstick. Yeah, we have one or a few of those, right? But if you look at our whole, if you, you, know, uh, if you look at our whole slate and our uh, slate moving forward, Right, moving forward, we are working with uh, Eric Hu on a couple of movies. We are working with Royston Tan. Now, you won't call them slap slapstick or horror filmmakers, would you? you know? So, I don't think this uh, so-called reputation is, uh, is, is substantiated by what we, what we do. Going forward, like I say, in terms of catalogue, we, of course, we are not a uh, 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 so-called a, uh, uh, a company that just support filmmakers for the sake of it. We are a commercial entity, and we look at each property for its um, commercial returns, right? So we, we, we look, uh, uh, but at, at the same time, we are working with different, different filmmakers uh, with different genres to offer, right? If you, if, you, if you look at our slate coming forward and, and you can go to the market, our booth, and you then look at what we're coming up with, I don't think that reputation is, is a necessary reflection of what we do. Okay. Here's an interesting one, a sort of a more macro question. Directions of Southeast Asia film financing, what's the end game? Hollywood repackaging, for example, like The Raid, or more localised content? Anybody? Where do we see Southeast Asia film financing heading? I don't think you can run away from localised content as a base. And we have to continue to develop in a direction to make better movies, first of all, that has a local appeal. But we can't just focus exclusively on that, which is why MM2 is trying different ways either to repackage it for an overseas market, you know, for a more regional market. But the local, local base is the start of what we have to do. Any other perspectives? Yes, Shinju. Uh, I think you know the, of course, the late, which is the you know the pre-sold before the you know completion, and also you know the Sony classics uh, get the rights of the remake, and uh, now you know I'm producing the Indonesian record Japanese co-production Kiras, which is also you know the, the director, the Gareth Evans is our executive producer, so we are looking for some like a chance to sell the rights of the remake to the, of course, you know, major studios in the US, because that is going to be a big uh, possibility to get the profit from the film. But at the same time, of course, you know, the original film itself has to succeed in the, you know, certain market. So we have like a two ways to go. Of course, you know, we are going to succeed with the film at the market itself. At the same time, we are looking for some chance to sell the remake rights to the major studios, hopefully. That's what we are doing now. Uh, you partly is going to answer this next question, but it's addressed to both of you. The question is, can Nikatsu and CJ share their future collaboration with Southeast Asian countries? Of course, I think that's the primary reason that we both are here. <laughs> um, yes. We are constantly looking for future collaboration with Southeast Asian countries. Um, we also recognize that Southeast Asia is a huge market because um, it's, it's different from Korea because there are, Korea is the only country that uses use Korean. That's very obvious, the same as Japan. But Southeast Asia has a, somehow a, 
uh, intermix of culture. And it's, it's very interesting for us and it, it's a challenge, but I, I'm we're constantly looking for good partners that we could partner up with to come out with the content that goes back to the question before that's gonna work primarily in that South Asian market first because that kind of um, sets up the precedent of the Hollywood, if you want to extend to a Hollywood vision, then they know that that movie, they always wanted to see like, what's this based on? So I'm sure it's the same as Japanese cinema. They, it always goes back to the originality. Too. Is it based on a manga or like novel? Same thing too for us, for CJ titles, we sell for remake because it's proven that it has, it has succeeded at a single market and that gives a confidence to the U.S. studios that it's going to work in the U.S. market if they, you know, make it a little different. So, yeah, that's that's yeah. We're looking very positive towards the future collaboration. Yeah, actually, my answer is of course yes, because you know there are so many like young talented directors in Southeast Asia, because you know they started filming like maybe in the United States, or, you know, in Europe, in Australia, and they just came, you know, they come back to their country and they started, you know, their own like a production. So, and the good thing is that, you know, before like, uh, you know, the, we need to much money to make a film uh, because, you know, we have to make the film with the 35 millimeters film. But nowadays, you know, we can get the like a, not cheap, but less expensive like equipment, like a, uh, red camera or you know other like a digital camera which can shoot with 4K or you know 8K. So in my opinion, of course you know the how market you know how market is going to grow up. Uh, it's I don't know exactly because you know I can not predict exactly what's going on for the like a uh, economy because it's related to the like politics and also you know other uh like uh, influence outside of the stuff but what i can say now is that you know there are so many good directors and so many good creators is growing up in the southeast asia and i'd like to take them to of course you know that lots of korean directors are making a film in Hollywood, at the same time, I, I would like to bring, you know, take the Southeast Asian creators to get the, to the like Hollywood productions because you know, it's of course you know there are lots of you know restrictions to make a like a Hollywood film, but you know the directors can big budget to make a film. That what you know I would like to do with the Southeast you know Eastern Asian like directors. Thank you. Just to complete this part of the conversation, maybe I should just ask Suhui, what types of content projects looking forward, uh, looking ahead into the future, what types of projects does Starhub look out for? If people wanted to come to you for an exploratory conversation, what are you looking for? Okay, uh, I think there's several things we look for. I think first is whether or not there's a good script, or what is the uh, production experience of the production team, I think we're looking always uh, looking for a good storyline, uh, whether or not uh, it fits our branding and our marketing the direction, and ultimately, actually, maybe at the later stage, whether or not it meets our ROI. Because uh, as an investor, we're always looking for returns of uh, investment. So that that would be what we're looking for. I mean, just to add on, I think just now what we are talking about transmedia. I was just thinking, I think today this is something that we are uh, looking and expecting, but perhaps maybe not every aspect of it could be part of the content delivery. Maybe certain parts could be used as marketing, because I think it is important to actually cover the entire process uh, to have multiple touch points. So yeah, that, that would be something that we will be looking for. Thank you. Are there any questions that the audience would like to ask live at a microphone? Anyone? Any hands up? If not, there are two more there very quickly that you can see on the screen. Quickly, uh, do we see a trend of bigger deals coming out of Southeast Asia with companies and people like Ascension Pictures and Philip Lee? Yes, do we see a trend of bigger deals coming out of this region? Anybody?
maybe let me just let me let me begin and answer. Yes, potentially, please bring them to the attention of the people and organizations represented on this panel. I think it's really in the hands of many of us to see what happens, whether that indeed becomes a trend, because I think we need to have the appetite to look at these possibilities and, uh, and, and embrace them with an open mind, but also bear in mind the, uh, pragmatically what, what is possible and what actually will work. Uh, you know, Shinjiro, Shinjiro was talking about, for example, the importance in your experience of uh, director cast being known even if the budget is modest. And the other question actually, just in case you had anything to add, Shinjiro, was uh, that uh, colleague through this device asked if you could give examples of other co-productions you had uh, done. I think he or she must have meant apart from the one that you are uh, working on with Indonesia. Do you want to just very quickly perhaps wrap up with that? Any, any answer to that? For Nishimura-san, could you please give some examples of co-productions you have done in Southeast Asia? How did they turn out? Uh, actually, you know, uh, for Kira's, we didn't do any like over budget because you know the budget thing is very very important. But uh, hopefully we you know uh, completed the film in the budget scheduled, and uh, I think uh, the you know the interesting way is that you know how people communicate each other, even though, you know, the, like, unfortunately, there are, like, a few actors who can speak English in Japan, so the communication is very, very uh, important stuff during the production, because once, you know, we have, like, a misunderstanding between actors and crew and, you know, directors, that would be a big problem to solve, to fix. So I think, you know, if we can have a, like a good crew and, you know, experienced like a key uh, people, like for the DOP or GAFA or production designers, and of course producers, uh, I think that's not so difficult to do the co-production between like uh, Japan or Korea or you know Southeast Asia or you know of course Hollywood. So that's not exact example, but you know, hopefully, you know, that's almost the same to make a film in Japan. Well, you know, on that note, although uh, this panel session might not have answered all the questions in everyone's minds and perhaps we've raised more questions than we've provided definitive answers for. I think actually we've had uh, an accurate reflection of the cross-section of what is happening out there right now. The reality is there is often no straightforward answer. The reality is priorities are evolving and some of the things that we have talked about, the importance of identifying a primary market, the importance of having elements there that um, a potential investor can, can relate to and can uh, pinpoint as being potential factors contributing to the success and return on the film. Uh, the role of the sales agent, the role of the commissioning broadcaster, the role of the other partners, what we do typically if we don't have uh, internal financing to begin with. I hope that uh, we have given you uh, some food for thought. And uh, I would ask now uh, to Shinjiro, Yonu, Suhui, and Seyong, if all of you would join me in thanking them once again for their contributions. Thank you very much.